Hello everyone and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host Rob Bentley and thanks for tuning in. On today's show we'll discuss the unbeaten Bulldog football team, we'll recap the men's and women's home cross country invitational and we'll check in with one of our volleyball senior student athletes. First up, head coach Tony Anise of the Bulldog football team. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thanks Rob, glad to be here. You went on the road the first two weeks of the season and obviously one of your goals was to come back with a 2-0 record and, and you were able to do just that, a 49-21 to 21 win over Lake Erie this past Yeah, Saturday. you break up, uh, break up the season and kind of make some short-term goals and uh, you know obviously one of our short-term goals was to come back to, to Big Rapids 2-0 and uh, you know we're happy to do that. Last year uh, they were I think 1-5 and five on the road so a little bit nervous about it, but I thought our kids uh, handled the road very, very well and, and really was, were focused on the things that we need to focus on to be successful. You make a lot of improvements from week one to week two. Any team does. Uh, certainly uh, talk about your improvements from week one to week two. Well, I thought on the defensive stand of the, uh, side of the ball, uh, we really asserted ourselves um, last Saturday at Lake Erie and made bigger plays. And, uh, you know, I thought St. Francis week before did some nice things keeping our defense off balance. and. And this week we really adapted a little bit more effectively and, and I thought that was the key to the game. You were able to get contributions offensively from a number of uh, different individuals, seven different guys uh, reaching the end zone. Uh, just talk about that balance on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I didn't know seven different guys scored, but I know uh, statistically we had eight guys who had between five and seven carries. And I think the person that had the most carries had seven. So um, that's nice to have. Um, it wasn't done intentionally, but we ended up playing three different quarterbacks who all, I thought, performed very, very well. And, uh, you know, the ball was kind of shared. And, and, and that's a beautiful thing because, you know, you want to have, uh, want to have a lot of guys who can help contribute. And, and that certainly happened on, on Saturday night. As we go to the highlights of Saturday's game uh, down at Lake Erie, you, you made the drive down on Friday, had a chance to get acclimated uh, to Painesville, Ohio. And as you, as you got ready uh, for the contest, uh, what were some of the, the objectives coming in against Lake Erie? Well, we were... Uh, the karma was with us. We practiced there in Toledo, and as soon as we got off the practice field, it started to storm. And then as soon as we left uh, Painesville, it started to storm again. So it was a beautiful night, and we, uh, we wanted to just come in and, and really assert ourselves early, and, and I thought we did that. Um, you know, we started with the passing game. You can see KG catch the ball there, and, and Jason uh, throwing a, our first touchdown pass to Cody DeWitt. But, we started out really throwing the ball because we thought they would be thin in the secondary, which they were. And, uh, you know, we, we passed the ball for over 300 yards and rushed the ball for 300 yards. Here, Mike Elias makes a big uh, pick and, and uh, sets us up at the three. And, and, and Jason Vanillon takes it in on the first play of, uh, after that turnover. So uh, pretty key to get a quick start. We were ahead 21 to nothing. And, and our defense here really, you can tell, asserted themselves. Jordan Morgan had a great game. And, and uh, he was our defensive player of the, of the game. Uh, Taylor Maswitz, as you can see, came in and, and uh, relieved Jason Vanderlaan, who had a little strain in his, his hamstring um, through a touchdown pass there to Trico Searcy. I thought Jason did a really nice job. He was our offensive player of the game uh, for this week. Bulldogs rolling up 665 yards of total offense. Uh, it seems like uh, for the second second straight week, you were able to run the ball pretty effectively, over 360 yards rushing. Yeah, someone said we were close to the, the school record. I didn't know that, but what, eight, ten yards away from the school record. But uh, a lot of yards and, uh, you know, seven touchdowns, but still a few turnovers that stopped our drives and, and created some problems for us. Uh, and uh, so we need to do a better job of, uh, handling the ball and, and particularly in the red zone we've made some mistakes in there that, that have really hurt our, our productivity. You take a 28-7 to 7 lead into halftime, uh, what were some of the, the keys to the focus uh, coming out of the halftime? Well we talked about uh, just trying to get the next score and make it 35-7 to 7, which you can see there we, we hit Skyler on a screen and, and that, that made the game 35-7 to 7. and we thought if we, we were, if we were to make the next score um, and to start the second half that, you know, we would control the game at that point in time. If they made the next score, then it's a two touchdown game. So, uh, and there's uh, KG catch a touchdown pass. So that put it at 42 to seven and the game was pretty much in hand. Talk about that opportunity against Lake Erie uh, later on in the second half, uh, opportunity to get some other guys some experience and, and help add some depth. Well, I, 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 one of the players told me this, so I don't know this is fact, but he said that at one time we had 10 freshmen on the, on the field on <laughs> offense at one time. So pretty cool. Uh, so we got a chance to play a lot of guys, and, and uh, that's just awesome experience for our young guys. 
on the offensive side, uh, you didn't punt the whole the whole game. Uh, obviously, a couple couple turnovers where you beat yourself. But uh, talk about that offensive uh, production, being able to to hold on to the football for the most part, and be able obviously not to have to punt the ball. Well, I've said it all along. We're a we're a team that takes what the defense gives us. So um, the week before, probably the Fair State fans thought, you know, can they throw the ball at all? And and this week we came out and threw for over 300. We still rushed it pretty effectively. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I feel good about our offensive productivity. Um, you know, it all comes down to scoring points. And, and uh, you know, we've, we've averaged 42 points a game, and we've only punted once uh, in two games. But uh, we got to continue to improve. There's a lot of growth that we still really can, can experience. And, and this week, we've got Ashland, who's a defensive, you know, defensive dominant program. Ashland coming off a seven to nothing win over Wayne State, the the defending national runner up this past weekend. Now, yeah. what do the Eagles bring to the table in terms of the home opener this Saturday? Well, they're just so well prepared. They're a, just a disciplined defense. Um, you know, they they just are, you know, so well schooled. Their coaching staff's got the kids so well prepared, and and so it's going to be a task. Um, you know, my feeling is we've had kind of an edge in regards to um, us having a system in place that is a little bit unique and. Uh, now that the, there's film on there for two weeks, so Ashland will come in with a great game plan and make it a little bit more difficult on us. Your team uh, home, first of back-to-back -back home games uh, here in Big Rapids, and uh, what type of motivation is that for your kids to be able to play in front of the home fans? It's huge. Uh, last year, I think they were five and one at home, and uh, and uh, you know I, I think our kids feel comfortable at home. I'm so excited about it. I hope we can get the Big Rapids community and a lot of the Fair State students here to support us. Uh, I think enthusiasm's high, and uh, Saturday night, 7 p.m., um, should be a great ball game. You've uh, been able to establish some momentum here early uh, with a couple wins. What does it take to carry on that momentum into Saturday and, and then obviously into the weeks beyond? Well, part of it stems from the fact you just got to do what you've been doing. Um, you know, you're playing a, a team that's picked to win the GLIAC South, uh, you know, a nationally ranked opponent. So, but we, we got to be who we are. We got to be a little bit better in executing our systems and making sure that in the big game we don't focus too much on, on uh, you know being someone we're not you know we got to be who we are and and handle the ball and and you know really use the, uh, the players that we have as playmakers because I think we've got some playmakers you know we've got some guys on the perimeter that can then do some special things and our quarterbacks all bring a little bit of a unique uh, uniqueness and and let alone our three running backs you know Skyler uh, Skyler's kind of the Mr. Outside. Jamal's a you know a, a train, and then Corey Ringer. You saw some of him last week. Uh, he's a guy that has some versatility that can do both. So um, we're pleased with uh, where we are, but we got to continue to improve. Well, Coach, uh, best of luck on Saturday night against Ashland. Congratulations on the victory this past Saturday. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.